Hello again, everyone. You join me in the shed. Um, it's really good at the state of my hair. Look, um, I haven't just woken up. I promise. I've been up for a while. Um, I am in the shed where I am rebuilding the K Series engine. Now, I put up a poll, uh, a poll on the Instagram page, and uh, just to see if anyone would want to see uh, me rebuild the engine. Um, I had quite a few responses, so I think we'll uh, we'll give this little video series a shot. We're just going to um, do the. It's met. I mean. The majority of it is assembled, it's just got to put the piston rings um, back on the pistons and the pistons back in the block and then the head can go on. Um, but obviously, you guys are interested, so I thought I'd film a little bit of it. Um, anyway, this is uh, part one. Um, today I'm going to be stripping down the old cylinder head, getting the inlet manifold off of it, um, the cam cover and stuff like that, and then putting that on the new head. And uh, if I've got time, I'll start gapping the rings on the pistons as well before I put them back in. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today. Um, stay tuned. Uh, let's get into it. All right, so this is the old, uh, this is the old cylinder head. Obviously, we need a few bits off of this um, to put onto the new cylinder head I have. So, what we need off is this cam cover. Obviously, the inlet manifold needs to come off, and I think the coolant elbow might be okay uh, to reuse on there. So we'll keep that on there for now and see what happens. Um, but obviously, first of all, I need to get the inlet manifold off, which is um, just some 30mm nuts, uh, just holding this onto the actual head, and then that can come off and I can just put it straight on the new one. Um, and then the cam cover, uh, and then this can go in the bin. I might take the cams out, but other than that, there's no point in keeping it because it is just scrap. So uh, let's get in with the, let's get on with the inlet manifold removal to start with. <laughs> So we've got the inlet manifold off. Um, that's now on the floor down there. So we need to get these cams off. Um, so we're gonna I can make sure this is the right side. Yeah, there we go. Just gonna unzap that. Uh, just so I can get the um, the cam cover off, because obviously our new head doesn't have that. So these need to come off, and this can come off, and this is then the rest of it can go in the bin. Right, so I've done about as much as I can do. Camshaft and the cam covers back on. Just waiting for the new inlet manifold gasket before I put that back on. But let's start getting to work on the block. Let's get that back up here. All right, so piston rings. Uh, piston ring gaps, obviously, are very highly talked about in the K series world. Um, and what you've got to do is take the piston rings off the piston, and you're gapping this gap here on both the compression rings top is 0.5 bottom is 0.6 um, I'll show you exactly how to do that and exactly what to do so I'm gonna take these rings off and then I'll get the rings out and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing um, and how to gap them properly if you're running over 200 horsepower obviously okay so as you can see this is the piston ring in the ball so the gap you're measuring is this one here you want the top ring to be 0.5 of a millimeter so you take your uh, feeder gauge as you can see I've got mine here 0.55 that'll do um, and then you're just simply sliding it in that gap now it doesn't fit as you can see so the gap is too small so to open that up you take uh, you've got a very small fine uh, miniature file here and you just hold the ring and um, you work evenly obviously on the Sorry, on the two gaps, work there and there. Uh, just do small amounts at a time until you achieve that 0.5mm of a gap on the top ring and then 06 on the bottom ring. Um, obviously they've got to stay in the liner so you can't swap these rings into these rings. They've got to stay in this in this liner here. So uh, it's relatively straightforward. Obviously you can get someone to do it for you if you don't feel uh, mechanically confident. So just do all four um, and get the pistons in and then that will do for today. 
um, for the head gasket we've got to get and if you have little bits before we can put it back together even more so yep let's cap these rings and then get them back on all right so once you've gapped them correctly uh, the top one like i say is your 0.5 what you'll find is is that the feeder gauge goes straight in no resistance whatsoever straight in there maybe minimal resistance but that is the top ring gapped at 0.5 mil that one can now be left to the side or put back on the piston that you are putting in this cylinder and you can move on to the bottom ring to make that 0.6 it is very simple and self-explanatory. Um, one thing I do recommend, old piston like this, um, just put that in the ball and push it down, just so that the ring is completely flat and level in the, in the ball, that'll give you the most accurate reading. So yeah, that can come out now. It can go on the new piston, and then this one can be gapped, and we've got to do all four. All right, so I've put three of the pistons back in. Um, I thought I'd just show you quickly how to put them back now all the arrows have to be facing the same direction as the ones when you remove the piston so all of mine are facing towards uh, the cam belt side of the engine um, you need one of these piston uh, ring clamp tool bring it over the piston uh, I need to find the tool okay. in my case it's a little wrench that's it you just tighten it over the, the piston rings now ideally you want to seat it ever so slightly in the block, like that, and then I'll tighten the, you want to keep pressure down, push down on the clamp to tighten it up, just don't the rings to pop out. Okay, so that's now tight, uh, a bit of tissue in there just to protect the top of the piston, um, something hard and strong, push down as hard as you can on the piston liner, uh, piston ring tool, and just tap the piston in. And that's it. Now I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. And that's it. That's all four pistons in. Now I'm going to flip the block over. Like that. And we can have a look at tightening the uh, bottom end shells. You can see that one's ever slightly pushed out. That one's okay. Push it back in again. Uh, put, the, put the end caps on and then that is the pistons and the rings all back in and ready to go again. There you go, all four pistons back in. That was obviously got a bit of damage on from where I was hitting it down. Uh, all four pistons in, uh, bottom ends all tightened up. The liners are all in and sealed, as you can see. Um, just so you know, when you put these back in, don't turn the engine over because it can push the liners back out again. Um, so that's now me done. Obviously, we need a few bits. Uh, I've got a head gasket kit and all the bolts and that. I've got an oil pump coming for the front, and various water pump. Um, and all loads of other loads of little bits. Obviously, we're going to need to get the inlet manifold gasket for that, and then that can go back on. And that's the block done. Um, in regards to the car, as you can see, we've had a bit of snow today. Um, this is the subframe, still in the same position as it was before. I'm waiting for a couple of front arms, so that goes back in. But yeah, chilly one today, working outside. Quite a lot of snow as well. I'm trying to get to work tomorrow is going to be interesting. But yes, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I know it's been a bit different. Um, hopefully you guys want to see more of this, obviously. Once the engine's more back together and it's a bit warmer, it'll be a bit more interesting. Um, I'm trying to get it just so that it's covered up and doesn't go all, all rusty on the insides. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today. Um, stay tuned for more videos on the Metro and on the ZR as well, it's coming up. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.